Hi guys. We're going to learn how to use a caliper, which is this tool that we use to make very precise measurements. It's very easy. We have to make sure of three things. First, that it's on. Second, that it's on millimeters. And third, that it's on zero when we start uh, the measurement. So this is a caliper. There is a ruler here and there is a small screen here. So we have to turn it on first. Right? We have to make sure that it's on zero. And it has to be on millimeters. In this case, it's on the upper right corner. If you move it, if you open it, you'll see that the number here has to match with the number on the ruler. When you start to measure, it has to be on zero. And that's it. Very easy. Let's look at a horse skull so we know how to make some measurements of their teeth. This is the side view from the right, or right lateral. Looking at the skull from this aspect, the anterior, or front of the skull, is to the right, and the posterior, or back of the skull, is to the left. All of these terms will be important once we start making measurements of the teeth. Now we can zoom in on the six cheek teeth, which include the three premolars and three molars. Again, the posterior is on the left and anterior on the right. Notice the distinct ridges in the middle of the teeth, which can be a good way to tell which side of the tooth is lateral. Another term we use for this side of the tooth is labial, or toward the lips or cheek. Okay, now let's flip the skull on its head and look at the occlusal view, with a side that shows the chewing surface of the teeth. Notice that the front of the skull, the anterior, is still to the right and the posterior, or back, is to the left. Also in this view, right lateral is towards the top and medial is toward the midline of the skull. We can see the teeth, the important part, a little bit better if we zoom in on this occlusal view. Here is an individual molar removed from the skull. Just like we saw when it was in the skull, the distinct ridge in the middle of the tooth indicates that this view is labial or lateral. This side of the tooth is the one we're going to want to measure for crown height, not this view, which is the medial or lingual side of the tooth, or towards the tongue. To measure the crown height, we want to measure the length of the red line. This measurement begins at the top of the wear surface of the tooth to the end of the enamel. You want to make sure when measuring crown height that you don't include the root in the length and that you're looking at the labial or lateral side of the tooth. Now here's the occlusal side of the individual molar. This is the side we're going to measure the anterior posterior length, or APL. Remember back to the teeth in the skull where anterior was to the front and posterior was to the back. That's how we're going to measure the APL from anterior to posterior, indicated here with the red line. These four teeth are examples you'll look at in the study set. The first two are casts of fossil horse teeth, and the other two are actual fossils from ancient horses. Again, we want to measure the labial or lateral side of the teeth, and not this lingual or medial view. The red line shows how you should measure the teeth from the beginning of the enamel to the end. Here's the occlusal view of the four example teeth of the study set, looking down at the chewing surface. We want to measure the APLs, the anterior-posterior lengths, in this view, which will be the distance between the right side and the left side of the teeth, the anterior and posterior sides, the length shown by the red lines.